Good morning, everybody. We're live here from the Bird House. It's Saturday, July 9th, and we're giving an update about some of the different birds you can find in your backyard, some of the younger birds, what they may look like, and some other things that you can expect, including some different insects that have been seen around, too, including some butterflies. Um, we've gotten some reports of monarch butterflies, which is really exciting. So they're coming into the area. That's always a fun time of the year. As always, if you are on. You can say hi in the comments if you have any sightings. We love to know what those are. You can put those in the comments as well. And uh, if you've got questions, throw those in there too. So let's get started. First of all, tomorrow, if you're in the Rochester area, there is a garden tour that we are going to have a table at. So we will we will be there. It's in the ABC Streets uh, neighborhood off of Park Ave. And from noon to four, there is a garden walk so you can explore some of the different gardens there in the city and we'll have a table there at the bird from the birdhouse giving out coupons and you can see some of the products that we carry um, but it looks like it's going to be a wonderful day so come out and say hi i'll be there from noon to four so if you're looking for something to do tomorrow which is sunday july 10th um the abc garden tours going on here in rochester and then also we have our caption contest going on and there's still one day um, for this week's caption where you can still enter. The caption contest is always a lot of fun. You can caption this photo with your uh, funniest, smartest caption, uh, put it in the comments on our Facebook page and any caption that has the most likes or reactions will win a $25 gift certificate to the birdhouse. So in, in order to enter, you just go to our Facebook page and this picture of the two pileated woodpeckers here is pinned right up at the top and you can insert your caption in order to enter. So it's totally free to enter. Um, so you just caption this photo. As far as Orioles go, people have been reporting Orioles still coming to feeders, getting jelly, um, eating lots of mealworms. We've gotten lots and lots of reports of the Orioles eating beakfuls of mealworms, and they're starting to bring their young back to the feeders as well. So we've been waiting to hear about that kind of activity, and it is starting to happen. So of course, you've got your male Oriole. Um, the female Oriole can be quite yellow in color. So they're coming back to feeders as well. And then this photo was sent in um, just this week by Bob, who said young Baltimore Oriole siblings. Fun to watch as they were looking for food. Mom and dad nearby keeping a watchful eye. So if you see something that's about the size of, of an Oriole, but it's not that bright orange coloration yet, it's not that bright yellow coloration yet, it's kind of a dull yellow color. Um, it could very well be a juvenile Baltimore Oriole, especially if they're coming to your jelly feeders, especially if they're coming to mealworms. So if for a while you had put your Oriole feeder away because you weren't seeing any, now would be the time to put that grape jelly back out um, because the young are coming to feeders. Usually the adults will bring them to the feeder and kind of show them where it is and sometimes give them a beak full of food and then the juveniles start to come on their own. So it's a really fun time of the year to have those young Baltimore Orioles coming to the backyards. Hummingbirds, we've been getting some reports of hummingbirds. It seems to be another kind of a sparse year for hummingbirds. I personally haven't had much luck with getting lots of hummingbirds in the yard. Some people have had really good luck and they're getting them really consistently. Um, I'm wondering what your experience is with the hummingbirds if you're, if you have good experience or bad. Uh, if you can put your thoughts in the comments and share, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, not a lot of hummingbird activity. Personally, I tend to get a lot once more of my flowers are in bloom. So I'm keeping an eye out now that there are more and more of my hummingbird plants are starting to flower. Hopefully I'll get more. Um, but I haven't had much luck with hummingbirds coming to the feeders. One thing that we do have, if you don't want to do nectar, if you're kind of getting sick of refilling your nectar often and keeping that feeder clean, we do have something called the humbug feeder, which is a feeder to attract fruit flies. It's bright red. You put a banana peel in it 
and that will attract the fruit flies and the fruit flies will um, just kind of hover all around the, the feeder and crawl out of the feeder and the hummingbirds will pick off the insects. So that's something you can do if you want something a little bit more low key, but to still have a feeder out there for the hummingbirds, but it's not a nectar feeder. They call it a protein feeder. So that's another um, another option for you as well. So if you're not seeing a lot of hummingbirds, you're not alone. Um, seems to be kind of a sparse year as far as in backyards uh, for people with, with hummingbird feeders. Um, bluebirds. So bluebirds are fledging. Bluebirds can have up to three broods a year here. And um, th these photos were sent in by Bob, who's had his bluebirds nesting. He says, young bluebirds exploring the neighborhood along with mom and dad and occasionally being fed some mealworms at the feeder. So here's one of the adults. Looks like the adult male um, feeding the young bluebird. I love this picture with the, the young bluebird with its beak wide open looking for some food. So bluebird young have fledged, but um, the bluebirds will have multiple broods. So a lot of the time the young from the previous broods will stick around. So you'll probably see them all summer. And once the, the young from the second or third brood fledge, the young from the original broods will start feeding some of those young too. So they do stick around and they can help raise um, their little brothers and sisters, if you will. So uh, bluebirds are out. This is the, what a young bluebird looks like here. It does have a little bit of blue on its wings, but it has a lot of speckling. Um, so they are definitely out and about. And as the summer goes on, you might see more and more. And we've actually gotten some reports of people who just recently have been getting bluebirds coming into their bluebird houses. So it could be that they had their first brood in one house and then moved to a second house for their um, second and third broods. So um, if you haven't had any bluebirds coming into your house and you're feeling discouraged, you never know. They might start coming um, for the, those second and third broods. So keep an eye out. Here's some more photos of the young bluebirds. You can see the little bit of the blue on the wing and then they've got lots of speckling on them as well. So they are out and about here in the upstate New York area and all, all along the east coast. You can see these kind of bluebirds out there now. And then goldfinches. So we're starting to get into the season where goldfinches are going to be nesting. Goldfinches are one of our latest nesting songbirds that we have here. Usually songbirds are starting to mate, you know, April, May. Uh, the goldfinches wait till later in the summer. So they don't start nesting until July usually. And they really start nesting once there is a lot of plant down. So if you think of thistle that they really like, um, the thistle plants, once they go to down, they'll use that down to build their nests. Goldfinches are one of those birds that don't switch their diet to insects in the spring and in the summer. A lot of birds will switch their from berries and seeds to that of mainly insects. Um, goldfinches don't do that. So they are primarily a seed eater. So they don't really eat any kind of insect material. So it makes sense that they would breed later in the season once a lot of these plants are starting to produce seeds so that there's more of a bounty of food for them. So uh, as far as goldfinches go, that you might see them starting to come to your nesting balls. If you have those fluffy balls of natural cotton that we sell here, they absolutely love those. So if you don't have your nesting ball out, now is the time to put it out um, because they will start pulling away some of that nesting material to build their nest. Um, you do want to make sure to stay away from dryer lint and not put that out for the birds. It's just not known if chemicals from detergents can harm the birds in any way. So you want to stay away from um, any kind of dryer lint, but um, any kind of pet fur is fine for them. If you've got a pet that sheds a lot, um, once you once you brush them, you can even stuff that fur in something like a suet feeder and the goldfinches or birds like tufted titmice really like animal fur. Um, they'll pull that out to nest. But we do have nesting balls here if you're looking for um, for nesting some nesting material for the goldfinches. And I'll, actually, I'll have some at the garden tour tomorrow if you happen to stop by. Um, so here's a picture of an American 
goldfinch sitting on one of those thistle plants and it looks like this one has started to go to down so if you do have thistle around um, you'll see lots of goldfinches on there not only will they use the plant down to build their nests but then they'll eat the seeds from the thistle as well not that you want to necessarily grow thistle in the backyard um, because it can kind of turn into a noxious weed but uh, if you've got it kind of popped up in the distance goldfinches will come to it and here's a picture of a goldfinch here taking some of the plant down and this is what their nest looks like so they build a really uh, a really light fluffy nest and they usually have about five eggs in it they don't nest in houses so they'll nest in trees and in shrubs so there's no such thing as a goldfinch house but you can entice them by putting out some uh, nesting material and having a food source like a niger feeder nearby Cardinals. So there's young cardinals out and about, and um, they can look kind of funny and silly depending on how their, their feathers are coming in. Um, so the juvenile cardinals, you can tell them because they have a darker bill. So if you think about the male and female cardinals as adults, they have that bright orange bill. The young don't have that. So um, if you see a, a cardinal with a dark colored bill, that's going to be your juvenile cardinal and there are some out there um, if you're starting to see cardinals that are missing feathers on their head that is a, that that is a pretty common occurrence as well we've gotten a phone call about that yesterday about a cardinal that didn't have a crest um, cardinals are known to sometimes uh, molt all the feathers in their head all at once and it looks really really weird um, but it is natural and it's okay and they will grow back it can just look really really strange so um, that is it's not the most common thing you'll see but it's also not super uncommon um, so if you do see a cardinal that's missing a bunch of feathers on its head the cardinals okay the feathers will grow back it just looks really strange to have a completely bald <laughs> cardinal blue jays will do that sometimes too they're known to do that but here's some pictures of what a juvenile cardinal will look like they've got that dark beak usually they don't have as much of a crest as the adults do as their feathers are growing in so there are definitely young cardinals out there and they can have a couple of broods as well and um, when the the females are uh, are going towards their second brood. Um, they usually leave their original nest. The male cardinal will stick around and feed those young until they fledge. And then the female will start her, her second nest while the first nest is still about to fledge. So um, that is a fun behavior from the cardinals. Uh, Scarlet Tanninger, we've had a few people reporting Scarlet Tanninger and Chris sent in this gorgeous photo of a scarlet tanninger here. She says, this scarlet tanninger was very busy tonight bringing home dinner. Photo taken at Shadow Pines. So here's a gorgeous photo of a scarlet tanninger. The males are this bright red with a dark colored wing. And sometimes they'll call in the summer too. They, um, especially in the woods, if you're in the woods, you might hear them call. They do have a, a a pretty distinctive what's called a chick burr call and i'll play you their song and listen at the end you hear that chick so at the very end goes chick burr so let's go so sometimes you'll just hear that ending part the chick burr part um, but sometimes you'll hear their whole call. Last summer I was hearing Scarlet Tanager through the summer calling a little bit, so you still might hear them. And they'll be here through the fall. They're feeding on berries and insects. It looks like this Scarlet Tanager here, it looks like it has an insect um, in its bill there, so it's bringing some kind of food probably to a nestling. So here's the call again. So Scarlet Tanager are still around. So the male is bright red with that black wing. There's really nothing else that looks like that in our area. Cardinals, you know, of course are bright red, but the scarlet tanningers are even brighter. They don't have the crest and they have that dark colored wing. And um, here's some photos of a female scarlet tanninger that were sent in last year by Bob. And the, the females are quite yellow in color and they also have a dark colored wing and you can see it here in this photo better. Um, so the, the females do share some of the same characteristics as the males with that dark colored wing, uh, but they're just not as brightly colored 
as the males, as is typical in the birding world, at least here in North America. Monarch butterflies are starting to be seen, which is really exciting. Um, my milkweed in my backyard is in bloom. The common milkweed and the swamp milkweed and the butterfly weed is all in bloom. Um, it smells really, really nice. And it's attracting the monarch butterflies. And actually, um, caterpillars, people are starting to see eggs and caterpillars on plants. And here's a pretty large caterpillar. This was taken uh, by Laura, who works here at the birdhouse. Um, so she found quite a large caterpillar on her milkweed plant. So keep your eyes out on your milkweed. You can look at the underside of the leaves to see if there's been any eggs laid there um, because the monarch butterflies are coming back. And you might see something that looks like a monarch butterfly, but it's a little off. We do have a type of butterfly called the viceroy. It's smaller than the monarch butterfly and it has this stripe that goes through its hind wing here. So that's how you can tell the difference. Um, the size of the viceroy's Quite a bit smaller and they've got this stripe here on their hind wing which the monarch butterfly does not have so you can see here there's no stripe there on the wing so um, that's the monarch butterfly and the viceroy butterfly also the monarch butterfly has this cell here that almost looks like a mitten it's kind of mitten shaped there and on the viceroy it's not it's not distinctive like that. So it's another way you can tell the difference. Some other butterflies to be on the lookout for white admiral really beautiful butterfly with red and blue spots and the bright white stripe that goes through its body giant swallowtail so if you're lucky enough you might see a giant swallowtail not super common here uh, in our area but they are around and it's lightning bug time if you've spent any time outside recently you've probably seen lots of lightning bugs and um, this is what they look like when they're at rest so at night um, they're really easy to see of course because they're glowing um, but this is what they look like so you might see them on your plants they're called lightning bugs or fireflies but they're actually not a fly or a bug they're a type of beetle and um, this is what their larva looks like. They have larva that will um, crawl around in the ground. And if you're seeing your lawn start to glow at night, um, it's probably the larva from the fireflies because they also glow. So at their um, abdomen here, they, they will actually glow. So I saw one last night in my lawn, um, saw some little glowing. They don't flash as much like the adults do, but they will have kind of a subtle glow. And what's neat about the firefly larva is they're quite voracious. They'll actually eat things like earthworms and other insects. So um, they can be you know, a beneficial type of predator to have in your yard. So definitely want to stay away from any kind of sprays in the yard um, because that will uh, kill off all your firefly larvae. So definitely be on the lookout for fireflies. They are around in big numbers. And like other insects, they start off as an egg and then out of that egg hatches that larva and then they'll pupate and out of that pupa will hatch the adult. So that is your firefly life cycle. Um, here is a new insect for me in my backyard. I had this beetle come, um, I think it was attracted to my back porch light. All of a sudden there's a big beetle flying around. Um, this is a grapevine beetle. And I actually do have some grapevine that's just kind of growing wild in my backyard was trying to maintain it, but um, the sighting of this beetle made me think maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. So now I've got some wild grapevine just kind of growing in the backyard, but I thought this was pretty cool. Um, the adults will eat grapevine leaves, but apparently they don't do that much damage to them. So they're not going to, to harm the plant. Um, this is what they look like. Uh, if, you know, if you've got a good picture of them, they're quite large, actually. And um, they're it, from what I've read, it looks like they do often come to porch lights at night. So you might see a big grapevine beetle flying around. They're in the scarab beetle family. So they're in that same um, the same family as, you know, if you if you have um, 
any kind of oriental beetles, which are, I, I get them in the backyard sometimes. They're uh, introduced species. They're in that same kind of family where they've got those legs that really hook on <laughs> to things so they can cling on to things to really, really well. Japanese beetles are in that same family. Um, but the grapevine beetle is a native and it's quite large and it's Thought it was it was pretty cool it flew into a planter in my backyard so it was just kind of sitting there so um and then another thing i noticed in my backyard when i was doing some watering the other day are signs of leaf cutter bees and um so i was watering my you know my plants and i noticed this plant here which was different than the joe pie weed and the ferns i had growing around i think it's a type of aster um that just kind of found its way to the garden which is fine because it'll bloom in the fall and that's really good for the pollinators so you have some kind of a, a fall bloom for them um but i found this plant there with all these chunks of leaves out of it and this, this is from a, from leaf cutter bees and leaf cutter bees will sometimes use mason bee houses as well so if you have a, a mason bee house and you're seeing activity around it right now it's probably from the leaf cutter bees because the mason bees have kind of fizzled out um, but keep an eye on your plants in your garden because you might see signs of leaf cutter bees um some of these asters i had pulled out because I didn't want them all there. But then when I saw this activity from the leaf cutter bee, I thought, well, I should keep them. So now I've got the grapevine. I've got some more asters growing in the backyard because you never know what you'll get. It's caused some some really cool diversity in the backyard. This is what a leaf cutter bee looks like. They're kind of small. They, they look to me like mason bees. Um, and here's a photo of one kind of chewing that circle. The, that little circle out of the leaf. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, I really hadn't had much leaf cutter bee activity in my backyard before, but um, it seems like every year as I've been growing more and more natives and, and pollinating type of plants, I'm getting all kinds of new stuff. So that's really exciting. So be on the lookout for leaf cutter bees. You, if I can get them in my backyard, I'm sure you can too. So that is everything I have prepared for you guys today. If you have questions, you can absolutely put them in the comments. Um, looks like some people have uh, some hummingbird updates here. Margaret says, good morning. Compared to other years, hummingbirds have not come in the numbers as before. Got some bird bath protector at your store this week. What a difference. Okay, yeah, so Margaret's talking about um, bird bath maintenance, which is always fun in the summer as um, there's all kinds of pollen in the air and all kinds of things that can fall in your bird bath. Um, it can be hard to keep your bird bath clean. So of course we have brushes and, that, and the cleaners and that kind of thing. Um, but we also have something called bird bath protector and it's liquid, it's just a little liquid um, uh, enzyme. And you put a, a small capful in your bird bath when you fill, refill it and it'll just help break down some of the gunk that gets in your bird bath. So it'll help keep the water clear longer. So that is really popular this time of the year. So I'm glad it's, it's shown to be, uh, to be making a big difference. So thank you for that feedback. Um, Sharon says, good morning, trying to encourage my Carolina Wren to hang around. Can you help please? I love their song. Usually hangs out with me on the deck. Oh, how cute. So yeah, Carolina Wrens, they, they are cavity nesters, so they will nest in houses. We do have houses made specifically for Carolina Wrens that have a triangular opening. So um, they might not nest this late in the season, so that could be iffy as far as keeping them around, but I would put out some of the food they like. So they like the mealworms. So we talked about mealworms being good for, of course, the bluebirds and then the orioles, but wrens really like them too. So you can do mealworms, either live or freeze dried. They'll also eat sunflower hearts. So having some kind of a seed that has sunflower hearts in it could be good. And then also suet, they'll also eat suet. So. I would have some kind of a combination of that out there. We have a seed blend called Bugs, Nuts, and Fruit and Seed Logs that are Bugs, Nuts, and Fruit blend. They really like those. So having those in like a combination of suet could really help keep your Carolina wren around. Um, Anne says, lack of hummingbirds this year in South Bristol. I've tried everything. Kind of glad to know not just me and my neighbors. Yeah, um, haven't had really good reports from anybody about hummingbirds. People along the lake and um, kind of out in that area tend to get more, it seems like. Um, but yeah, not, not a ton of hummingbird sightings this year. Um, Randy says, neighbor had a grape, grapevine beetle in their backyard 
And then a day after another neighbor on a different street also had one. Okay, so this is, it's grapevine beetle season. So keep an eye out on your porch lights uh, because um, that's where I saw mine coming. Um, it was coming, flying around the porch light and then landed in the planter. So it is grapevine beetle season. So how exciting is that? Um, Ed says, wow, I've never seen a lightning bug beetle larva before and they even glow. Would there be larva around at the same time as the adults? We're seeing lots of adults. So maybe it's time for a safari into the wild for those larva. Yeah, because I've, I've been seeing um, firefly larva. I saw one um, crawling around in the backyard the other night. So now is the time where they will be out. And I think as the season goes on, you'll probably see more and more. But yes, I think it is safari time to see the larva. They're not the most beautiful thing, but they're cool to see glow. So um, really, really neat uh, type of insect there. Uh, Vicky says, our wrens just fledged. Gosh, they were so noisy during the baby, the baby feeding cycle. So um, yeah, we've heard lots of people that are getting the, especially the house wrens right now, leaving their nests. So they're finishing off their nesting cycle, which is really exciting. Um, so it looks like that's like everybody's comments and questions. If you are doing a backyard safari or a safari into the wild, like Ed is talking about, and you're interested in bugs, I love this guide. This is the best one I've ever found. It's a Kaufman guide to insects. It has um, not every single insect you'll ever come across, but it's got the real cast of characters. So you can find what that weird, strange insect is in your backyard. You can find it in this book. And when you're out on your safari, if you're having issues with mosquitoes, when you're out trying to see those lightning bugs, we have these scarves in, which are really cool. They're called insect shield. And they have some kind of a, um, uh, a scent to them, which you can't really smell it yourself, but it'll keep bugs away. So these are really nice in summer nights um, to keep the mosquitoes away. We've got a whole bunch of these in different colors and things. So it's one way to keep the bugs away and not have to use bug spray. So thought I would mention those as well. And if you're looking into butterflies and butterfly gardening, we do have really neat books about butterflies. I really like this one, The Life Cycle of Butterflies, because it will show the life cycle from egg up into the pupa and the the caterpillars can look really really different depending on which instar they're at so this is a really neat book if you are interested in butterfly gardening and getting more into um, identifying caterpillars and that kind of thing um it looks like oh there's a couple more comments randy says seeing bugs this year i have never seen before that's that's really good. That's a good sign. So, um, and it, it seems like the more, the more you're outside, the more, the more diversity of things you'll start to notice. So that's really fun. Glad to hear that. Um, Vicki says, I have yet to see the baby Orioles. I had two pairs this spring. Last year, they brought the babies to the feeder by July 3rd, still hoping. Yeah, there's still time. They it could have just started a little bit later. Um, we really just started to get reports of the babies coming to the feeders like over the past week and a half or so. So I would say there's still time. I wouldn't give up hope just yet. Um, it looks like that's everybody's comments and questions. We'll be back on Tuesday with another broadcast. And until then, have a great weekend and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.